friends, do you have plants and you're starting to feel cluttered? This video is for you. Bang, grow, YouTube show. Hi plant friends. I hope you caught the video a couple of videos back where I interviewed three amazing plant parents with 75 or more plants in their collection on how to manage a large plant collection. It was so helpful to me and to our community and also they are just amazing people. Cyril from Cyril Cybernated, Phoebe from Welcome to the Jungle Home, and Lucretia from Solstice to Plants. That video was taken from an epic almost hour and a half long podcast episodes that we did on Bloom and Grow Radio titled How to Manage a Large Plant Collection. So I've been repurposing smaller portions of that epic conversation to help you guys hone in on what you might need help with in your plant collection. So the other one was how to manage it. This video is a small snippet of the conversation where we talked about design because I think all of us have been through that moment as our plant collection is growing and all of a sudden we're like looking around and every surface is covered in plants and there's no rhyme or reason to it. Then as a plant parent and maybe just as a human we want to like take a step back think about it, get a little bit of our aesthetic going, maybe a little organization. Um, so I have a really fun conversation with these three amazing plant parents about their strategies that they use to manage their epic plant collection. Some of them have 200 or more plants um, and some strategies that worked for me too. I'm so excited to share these tips with you and I hope you enjoy them. Before we get into it, please be my plant friend and like this video and subscribe to the channel because I've got more fun conversations coming your way. Also, if you're interested in growing your own plant collection, take the Bloom and Grow Radio Plant Parent Personality Quiz. It's so fun, it's so short. You take it and you get your plant parent personality and a list of suggested plants, planty projects, and free educational resources for your specific lifestyle. It's real cute, I made it. <laughs> okay, without further ado, here's Lucretia, Cyril, and Phoebe. So I wanted to ask you guys your, your best design tip for um, making sure that it doesn't look cluttered. Because I think when you collect a lot of plants, it can feel cluttered. And that's for me when I had to go on my plant pause when like it was just too much. So do you have any suggestions? I know Phoebe had mentioned go vertical. I think that's definitely like the best hack ever. Yeah, like shelves are your best friends. Yeah. Um, I also hang my plants with a like a curtain rod yeah um, totally obviously it has mm -hmm. to be with the right like screws and yeah. voltage but um i love just hanging plants and you know it creates like this really beautiful green curtain moment in your apartment mm -hmm. and it might even save you money from buying real curtains if you are totally. okay with that and it would also give you privacy and from the outside people would probably think your apartment's like fabulous inside <laughs> <laughs> Great. I love that. What about you, Lucretia? I like to group plants together. So I like my snake plants, which are sitting by the TV. I, I wanted to add some greenery to that area because uh, the way that the light comes in through the south facing window, um, there's a love seat that kind of blocks some of that light, but it still gets light because the plants are still growing. Um, but I like to group them together. It just, to me, it just, it looks better, you know, sometimes instead of having that single plant and it kind of looks a little more organized, um, especially if it's one type of plant. So the snake plants and like, I'm looking at some philodendrons that are um, together. So that kind of looks interesting together. And then there's my bird of paradise is kind of sticking up out of the middle of it along with the Birkin, which gives a little bit of height, but it still seems a little more organized. So I found that I'm, I'm less interested in buying every type of popular plant because I'm more interested in how do the plants look together now. And yeah, yeah and it, it, I just like how that looks better. Or I, I have like a shelf that has the little cubicle squares and I'll put plants in those. And I kind of like how that looks too, especially the ones that are trailing. That's a nice little area to give them some room to trail, but also to make it look a little more organized too. Yeah, I want to add to that. So like it's, you know, like having all these plant shelves, you don't just like, you know, I, I always say like, don't just like put plants because it looks cute. Like I think definitely like for my plant shelf, I can spend two to five hours just organizing my plant shelf because it's kind yes. of like it's kind of like math or science whichever one you want science, to call it it's, sure. you really it is it is about 
the care. So like, I usually put the plants that I can quote unquote neglect a little bit on the taller shelf. Mm -hmm. And, but then it's like, Oh, can it, does it have to be closer to the window? Does it need need more light versus less light? And then uh, on top of that, I love design. So I always like to play with like textures and patterns Mm. and colors and shapes. So it's kind of like process of elimination every time I'm like stacking where the plant goes and how it, where it sits, why it's sitting next to this plant and why it's trailing down like this versus a straight plant. So to me, like, I love kind of like figuring it out. It's like a little problem solving, um, like puzzle for Mm -hmm. me to be like, where do you go? And like recently when I was reorganizing, I noticed that one of my Hoyas, which I've had for three years, um, I got as little tiny cutting and now I'm like, oh my God, you've graduated to like the third tier. I don't even have to think about you now. You're doing so fine. So it's like, it's all the way up to my like fourth fourth floor, the fourth floor. (laughs) Moving on up. It is a big deal with the Hoyas. It's a big deal with the Hoyas because Mm -hmm. especially if they're, if they, they just grow so slow. Mm -hmm. And when you see something, you're like, ah! are those new leaves? What is that? Is that a new, what's going on with this? And then once your plants are thriving, it's like, you're like, oh, "Oh, you're good. I don't even Mm -hmm. have to take care of you much. Like you're good. Yeah. Totally. What about you, Cyril? Well, um, yeah, I think that you should know what aesthetic you like um, because that's important on deciding on what's your unifying theme. For example, one of my Shelfie, I do like the warmer kind of tones. I go for terracotta. Um, all those Aztec prints, um, like patterns. So you can mix and match those. Plus, you can decide on the combination of the plant as well. And then the, the, the height, you can mix and match them to create different levels and depths. And that is what makes it interesting. And you could also like change it up according to season. So at times, well, there was a point that I wanted all white pots and they were ceramic and you would you know, keeping them uniform, but also different and not to mix mix and match, matchy matchy, I guess that's the right term, Uh, makes it interesting. Even that's why I always get surprised. Like, oh, there's already 60 because it doesn't look that much cluttered Mm -hmm. when you you took your time to arrange them. And, you know, based on the care, you're also your preference and the aesthetic. So that's really important. Um, And, you know, how all those very beautiful shelfies that go viral, they're always like following a specific theme or a um, Mm -hmm. particular of doing a particular aesthetic. And that's what makes it successful. Although I'm always a maximalist, I just can't do with just one or two and a little cute here and there. BB is also raising her head. Yes, I am definitely a maximalist. I know how it's not for everyone, but Mm -hmm. you could make it more appealing to a larger audience i guess when you have a unifying factor it can be the color it can be like the style if you want to do all trailing plants then let all the trailing plants trail in front of your shelf mix and match the small ones with the large plants and i think that's a really successful combination to make it not look cluttered i wanted to touch on what he said about the pot colors Mm -hmm. and um i realized that I was picking certain colors of pots. Mm -hmm. And so what I've decided to do is that I have mostly white pots or they're gray. Um, And then my colors, my pops of colors are blues and yellows. And then there are some terracotta pots. But um, something else that a lot of people, the first thing that many people do is that they'll get their new plant, bring it home, and they immediately repot it. Do not do that. (laughs) <laughs> Let it acclimate to your home. Leave it in that nursery pot. There's a reason why your plants are thriving at the nursery. And then you bring them into your ecosystem, which may suck. And the plant is shocked. It just has no idea what's going on. So if you decide on like a color palette, you can just buy pots and just put that plant in mm-hmm. that pot, whatever it is. But having that, that unifying color um, really does help if you're trying to go for an, an aesthetic look, um, especially in a space that you know that you're going to um, have people come in and you, you want to show it off. That really does help your space not look so cluttered and it's just messy. Unless that, that's your thing. That was the biggest change for me when I was growing my collection was figuring out that I had to unify my pots and not my plants. And I, because I'm cheap, 
have I'm based in terracotta and then some white. I'm mostly terracotta. I have some pops of white. And then I have a couple of like other pops of random like I have a couple of blush tones, but I stay in that like terracotta mm. white blush brown palette. And I love it. And I have a couple of pops of gold and bronze, but it's like, I, you know, in the beginning of plant, my plant parrot, I had like bright blue and white, like big blue and white pots and like <laughs> green and like just all this weird stuff. And, and the pots didn't go together. So it didn't matter that the plants, it didn't matter what the plants looked like because the pots just weren't cohesive. Um, and I think sometimes people get so obsessed with the plant, they don't necessarily think about that. Yeah, and also mm -hmm. kind of seeing if you're bringing more plants in, also see, I mean, more pots in, seeing what you have in your space already, look at the color palette that you already have. and Right, that you that. naturally gravitate yeah, to. Like yeah, like, for example, yeah. if I, like, I have so much terracotta, and if I just, like, randomly put, like, a black pot or a gray pot there, people are going to be like, what is she thinking? Like, yeah. why Why is it there, <laughs> you know? Um, like, for example, like, the Raven ZZ, it's, it's a darker color plant. And for me, it's actually not in my collection. It's actually my partner's office. And he's got this like black, gray, white theme, um, uh, like vibe in his office. So I paired it with like a matte black um, pot, ceramic pot. Mm -hmm. And like, it just looks nice. so cool. Like so slick. Yeah. It's easy to care. So have, just kind of like playing around with it. And like, for example, like I, I actually have a pink corner. Um, and I love grouping. I like I love colors in general, but I love also grouping colors together if I can. Cool. You know, plants and majority of them are green, but I just started collecting pink plants and I was like, oh, you all kind of look cute together. So I have like a little pink corner in my jungle home. Hashtag on Wednesdays we plant pink. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, I just wanted to add that even if you already have existing colors, because what I did with mine, like when you buy something from the grocery store. It's in a bright red pot. Spray paint does a lot of magic. Oh, yeah. If it doesn't yes, meet nice. your aesthetic, yes. spray paint that white, spray paint a terracotta, and you save it for a few bucks. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you also save the pot from being thrown out. I mean, good if you can yes. give it to someone who loves that aesthetic, but, you know, um, it's a really cheap hat. Or do a pot swap. Plant yeah, pot that's swap. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hot swap instead Super of a smart. plant swap. Oh yeah. God, I or I mean, if you want to swap a plant, you can do that too. You know, swap a pot with a plant. I got, I traded, I think I remember like back in the day, I traded like a string of, um, a string of uh, pearls with like a really cool, like tribal looking like terracotta pot. And I was like, sold. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's so many different varieties. I mean, we can move on. We're talking about pots for so long, but <laughs> also the thing with terracotta, I'm not like everyone can choose whatever they want, but the thing with terracotta is there's so many different cool types of terracotta and like mm -hmm. all these pots with faces on them and like different styles. Like, I don't know. I feel like people do s such cool stuff with terracotta and normally they always have a hole, a drainage hole. Yeah. Yes. A big thing yes. for me too. So Mm -hmm. um, and I think they're on the um, cheaper side too. Yeah, um, they are. easier to find, and they're also very porous, like yeah. the you know the materials. So it's just like overall, I think this is great with plants. And I personally think the color pairs really well with green. Totally, <laughs> that's true. It does. It does. And and yeah. a tip about terracotta pots is that if you have a plant that is very moisture loving, it loves water. Terracotta will soak the water out will mm -hmm. suck the water out of your soil so what i like to do with terracotta pots is i like to soak them so that they already have water oh, in cool. them yeah. and oh, then okay. put your plant in there oh so good this podcast episode is so good it's twice as long as i anticipated it being because the conversation was just so rich so if you want to get to know them more i would highly recommend going and checking the full podcast out so what tip resonated with you the most? Or do you have a design tip that maybe we didn't cover that you wanna share with our community? Cause please let me know in the comments. I am very active in the comments. I try to respond to everybody who comments. So I wanna hear from you, plant friend. Thanks again for being a plant friend and subscribing because I've got a whole bunch of videos like this coming your way in the next couple of months. And until next time, as always, keep blooming and keep growing.